Here it is, the AYN Loki's design has officially been revealed. But wasn't it revealed a few months ago? Well, I suppose not. In this video, we're going to take a look at the brand new AYN Loki design, as well as go over some of the questions and answers from the impromptu Q&A from a couple of days ago. Let's get into it. Hello and welcome to Retro Breeze. The official AYN Loki design is here, and it looks, well, substantially different than it did a few months ago. The cloned AYN Odin design is nowhere to be found, and it's now been replaced by quite a different device with barely a hint of Odin DNA left. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at the renders that AYN have shared. I'm going to start with this one because it shows a direct comparison with the Odin. And as you can see, we are pretty close to the same size as the Odin, but around 24 millimeters wider and just about three millimeters taller. There is the same size screen and it looks like it's going to actually be the exact same bezels as well. I'm guessing this will be the exact same screen that we see on the Odin. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Even the white model has a black bezel though, and there were some comments in the Discord where people were suggesting that it be made white instead. And I kind of agree with this, I think that would look a little bit better. And of course, that's what the original render looked like too. The most striking feature, of course, are these two full-size analog sticks. These are full gamepad style. They are not the smaller sticks found on the Switch or the Odin. And as you can see from the side view here, portability has been completely thrown out of the window in favor of the better gaming experience. I'm not complaining about that, by the way. Everybody will have their own opinions on it, but I'm just saying. They've definitely prioritized the gaming experience over the portability experience. In fact, they said something to that exact effect in the Q&A. Another notable difference is the D-pad. Gone is that classic PS Vita shape. Personally, I just really hope this is nice and clicky like the Odin's. I am a little bit sad that the Vita style D-pad has been discarded though. Now onto the face buttons. Well, actually, first of all, let's take a look at the face buttons and the D-pad because they're quite strangely positioned. As you can see, the D-pad is inset from the left stick and the face buttons are on the outside of the right stick. And what this means is that those big chunky analog sticks are gonna be well out of your way when you're using the face buttons or the D-pad. I think this is a very smart design and it reminds me of the Hori split pad, the Joy-Cons that you can get for the Nintendo Switch. Also on the front, we have front facing stereo speakers and four buttons. That is start and select, home, and a turbo button. But don't worry, this isn't turbo as in it's gonna make your buttons work faster. It's turbo as in it brings up an on-screen menu to control things like TDP, etc. The LEDs have been changed as well. And they seem to run a little bit along the bottom and up the sides, but are very thin, more like a light bar. When looked at from the side, the Loki has these huge chunky grips. And when you look at it from the front, you can see that the bottom left and bottom right corners curve downwards, almost exactly like the Steam Deck. So clearly there's been quite a lot of inspiration here from various different devices. And I think that's probably a good thing. And overall, I think that the Loki actually looks really, really, really great. There's also some renders that have been shared of the black version and the white version. However, it's important to note that these are just renders. There is no prototype with this shell yet. Now I'm gonna get straight into the kind of impromptu Q&A that they did. This is two or three days old now. I was a little slow in the uptake, to be honest. But there are some important points raised. So first of all, I'm going to talk about subjects relating to the company and the product launch. And one user commented that it was too late to market. And the response from AYN was that later is better than never. This is a real business. We might be inexperienced, but still sincere with our products. We will publish more information from now on. This is just a start. So that's good. I hope they keep this promise. And to be honest, they did keep the promise with the recurring Q&As. So I'm guessing we'll hear more and more about the Loki in the next few weeks. Another commenter said, so is it not going to be the same as the one on the website? And the answer was, yes, all the photos will be changed soon. And I'm going to follow that up with the next question. Why are you not updating your website? There is still quarter four pre-order. Not everyone knows about Discord, so it's not that honest to customers. And same with the design. We knew for months here about the new shell and the delay, but basically every new person that pre-orders it now, or did in the last two months, is lied about the product he is buying. It's like the AliExpress scum photos that have nothing to do with the actual product. And the answer from AYN on that one was, we will update with all the images. And this is a very good point. However, I have to say that while I'm recording this, three days after the Q&A, the website still has not been updated. So if anybody browses to the website and pre-orders without knowledge of the Discord, they're gonna have no idea what they're getting. They really, really, really need to update these now. AYN also commented saying that the refund is always available if you change your mind. We do not refuse these kinds of requests. 
And I think that's good, and if you can say anything about AYN, it is that they are very good at giving refunds without any questions asked. But this situation shouldn't really even be a thing in the first place. So the next question, then why even start accepting pre-orders six months early? Great question. And the answer, surprisingly, wrong decision, we admit it. We should do an Indiegogo or campaign or Kickstarter, and we would do that next time. Okay, I'm glad that they're admitting this. I mean, the Loki launch has been disastrous from start to finish, or start to wherever the heck we are now. Um, and it's good that they're admitting this, but even so, it's really not very nice to kind of be a guinea pig when you've got $600 on the table, especially when such radical changes to the product are possible. So the next question, so what are the next steps and when do you plan to have your own prototype in hand? And the answer, now we will move from engineering verification testing to design verification testing. So basically, they're good on the hardware, now they just need to start testing the design. And that's why I bring up the point earlier that these are just renders. There is no prototype with this shell, and it basically hasn't even been created and tested yet. So even this render is subject to change. It probably won't, I'm guessing, but it is subject to. Now, before I move on, I want to share a few comments from users in Discord, because I think it's pretty important to highlight the strange situation that we're in here with this product. One person said, the old renders looked better. This thing was supposed to be an Odin with x86 internals. This is a whole new product at this point. And somebody else said, Unreal, the AYN tricked people with those initial renders, only to change the shell completely six months later. Absolutely unreal. And finally, somebody said, It's good to see you admitting this, referring to the wrong decision of taking pre-orders early, but to not have this foresight six months ago does not sit right with me and probably many others. I have no regrets cancelling my pre-order. At this point, it's not the same product that was promised at the time. And I've gone off on this in my last two QA summaries as well, but I think that these comments really sum up the situation, because I was one of the people that bought the Odin, that adores the Odin. I love it so much. It's my favourite handheld of all time. I don't think, for me personally, I could find better than the Odin. And when the Loki was announced to be an Odin with x86 internals, that was what I wanted. And whereas I think that the new design looks stellar, I think it looks brilliant, it is not what I purchased, it's not what I put my money down for. And so this is gonna resonate with different people in different ways, and some people just want their cool product, some people have trust in the company, some people are very disappointed that it's not an Odin with x86 internals. I sit somewhere in the middle, whereas I'm very disappointed that it's not just gonna be a much more powerful Odin, I also see that it's possible that there's a better design. However, it's still, I don't know, I'm just kind of, I don't know, empty at this point. I'm just like, yeah, whatever. I guess you're just going to do whatever you want, so do it. Um, and hopefully it's a good device. I guess that's what it all comes down to. And I will also say that with the size of the Loki having full-size joysticks, I think that's going to be a really, really good experience. For the gaming experience, I mean, maybe less portable. But even so, I don't think there's been an x86 device this small and this powerful with those full-size sticks, so that's exciting to me. All right, so let's look at the questions that were asked about the design. And there's also just some statements here. For example, AYN said, we use big joysticks to ensure the gaming experience first. Right, good idea, I guess. Do you guys know when they will start the mold process? And AYN said, two weeks later. So I'm guessing two weeks from the Q&A, which was two days ago, or three days ago. We have a 3D print mold and a working sample, but we do not want to publish now. Please wait for the next time. All right. The next question, so how does it feel so far? And the answer was, working but not perfect. Our engineer has it and is still working on it for the final version. The next question, I'm sure it will look better when it's not in a 3D printed case too. Do you have LEDs in the 3D printed version now? And the answer, LEDs are not difficult for this project, no worries. Next question, are the issues left mold plastic placement issues or other hardware issues? And the answer was, no idea, I'll go to the office and check later. Great. Next question, do we know why there's just one USB-C port on the device? I recall you mentioned Loki Max will be larger than the Loki. Will that one be a bit different? And the answer, all Loki models will share the same design. That's the reason we redesigned the whole thing. And the next question, are there any renders of the Mini, and can we get a confirmation that it's still 15mm and not 20mm thick like these renders? And the answer, which is quite shocking, is it is 20mm. So the Loki Mini was supposed to be 15mm, so thinner than the other models, and that is now not the case. And this is one of those areas where I think that this changing of the product after you've taken pre-orders is just really not great for the paying customer, because that's quite a substantial difference in thickness, and it's called the Mini. So now why is it called the Mini, if you're going to change that? I don't know, it's just a weird situation. AYN also said, 
All Loki devices will be 20 millimeters and the Max will be thicker. Wow, that is going to be a huge device. I mean, that really pushes me toward a cancellation. I don't know if I'm really interested in a 25 to 30 millimeter thick device. I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Blah. I don't really know if that's going to work out, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. So the next question. So is the image the regular Loki, not the Max? And the answer was same model. So I'm guessing that the front of the device is going to be completely identical, including the silhouette and the size, and it's just going to be the back that's thicker. Next question. Is the Loki not going to have a Vita like D-pad? I notice the render has a different D-pad design, or will it have the same mechanism? I'm guessing as the Odin. And the answer was not a Vita D-pad. Again, I'm kind of disappointed about that, but eh. Next question, do you have any weight estimates at this stage? The answer, 600 gram, which is a little bit lower than the Steam Deck, I believe. Do you know how bright the screen is in nits? The answer, 500 nits. Very good. And is there a mouse on off button? Now there was no dedicated physical button. Then a follow up question, do you turn them off with the TDP software or some sort of combo key? And this one wasn't necessarily answered other than the fact that there's no dedicated button, but they were taking suggestions on whether you want that in software or a combo key. And a follow-up fact to that question about the turbo button was that the turbo button will be a full device-specific control panel for TDP control, fan speed, RGB LED, screen brightness, etc. One last thing I forgot to mention is that somebody asked will there be an atomic purple Awe and Loki because apparently that's the most important thing when it comes to handhelds these days. The answer was it would require a high minimum order quantity. They're not going to consider it at this time. And that's pretty much it for this one. It was an impromptu Q&A, not really a formal one like the last two, so it's a bit more sporadic. I will say one last thing they said is that Chinese New Year is Jan 21st, and there will be a half-month vacation at that time, so no updates in that time from January 21st for a couple weeks after. And they also said, I can promise you guys, besides the vacation, we are still working on this project. Well, that is, I guess, good to know. I do want to know they're still working on the project. And I've left this till last, but they also showed a video of a prototype Loki model. But it's a complete nothing burger, just look for yourself. Yeah, like nothing. So that's it for this video. Thank you very much for joining me on another episode of Loki Q&As. Will the device come out, won't it? We'll have to wait and see. If you like this video, please subscribe because I have more interesting content, including every single Loki Q&A update that they do from now until the release. Let me know what you think about the Loki situation in the comments below. Do you have one pre-ordered? Are you interested in the device? Did you pre-order it just now, not knowing it was different than it is on the website? Do let me know. This has been Shem from RetroBreeze, and I look forward to seeing you again very soon.